Hello, Steven here, and welcome back. So it looks like this is going to be the final video on setting up and configuring our sandbox for uh, basically having a workplace in a sandbox for using an Apache DiFi and setting up data flows. All right, so the last container I want to get started up uh, so I can use it at a later video is under my custom templates. I went and grabbed the Confluent Kafka Docker Compose file from Confluent Kafka, and it's their all-in-one uh, Docker file. I've modified it. Uh, and just so you know, so let's go ahead and jump over to my GitHub page, and we can see over here, uh, under the root, I created a second repository here just for the Docker Compose files that I use. And I'll just add them in here as I go. And all the ones we've discussed so far are all in here. So the DiFi cluster, Elasticsearch, uh, Apache Cassandra, and then the Confluent Doc, uh, Kafka one that we're gonna use right now. So we can actually take a look at it here and what's going on. So I made my notes up here at the top, uh, talking about the changes I made and where I got it from and the URL for where I got the original from. And then the modifications that I'm making here. So really the biggest changes I'm making are um, remapping my host ports, obviously, so that they match what I want on my host machine. And another big option is actually, so the, the first entry in here isn't the broker, it's the zookeeper if you get the original file at this location. And the zookeeper gets stood up, but I don't, I don't want two zookeepers because I'm joining this one, if we scroll down to the bottom here, I'm joining it to my existing NiFi cluster underscore NiFi uh, Docker network. So I want it to be in, I want these containers. Yes, they're going to be in their own stack, but I want them to join the existing, uh, network that's already set up and that my NiFi cluster is using so that they're all on there. And one big reason is, for that is so that I can reference stuff like the broker by their host name or in their container names. Uh, so that makes that possible because I don't think you can do it without that, without them being in the same network. Uh, at least I've never tried it that way. I normally always do it this way. So the other thing I had to do besides uh, delete that entire service for the zookeeper was go in here and modify all the areas where I change ports uh, and I have information for that. So the other thing you should have to do, I believe to get it working correctly when you set up with NiFi is right here, this local host should be the IP address of the host machine. So that would be not not the container address, but the, I believe it's gonna, you're wanting to change, change, you want to change this to your host machine IP address that Docker resides on. Okay, so that, I think you should be good. And another, so there's a couple things I wanna get out here. A, I want to be able to use this container to utilize uh, Apache Kafka inside of my NiFi data flows. Because uh, there's a couple of examples I want to do in there. The other is uh, I want to start. You, I want to use the schema registry in here, and utilize that for not using the uh, embedded schema registry with NiFi, but using this one instead. And there should be some benefits. We'll take a look at it when we get to that. When we get down the road in a couple of videos, where we start adding Kafka into our data flows. And there's a couple other things that are nice to have in here, just for demonstration purposes. Uh, one of the other one is the control center. So this uh, all-in-one comes with the uh, Confluent uh, control center that they use for enterprise. And um, this this basically gives us UI to interact with our Kafka once we have it up and running. And we'll go ahead and take a look at that too as we get there. All right, so first things first. And you can see there's a couple other services as well. But the reason also why I'm not starting this one before the Apache NiFi one is because this, uh, the broker is dependent. If we look at down below, it depends on, well, actually I deleted that out. No, wait, I did delete that out here. Okay. So there, there was a line in here for depends on as well, where it depends on the zookeeper. So I got that out here so I could start this out of order if I wanted to, uh, but it won't do any good because it can't connect. So why bother? Cause if the broker can't, connect and stand up correctly, even you have problems with the other ones. But uh, yeah, so that's really it. We're using that file, so let's jump back over and get it stood up as well. So here we go back to Portainer. Inside Portainer, we'll go ahead and say 
select it and deploy the stack. Shouldn't take too terribly long, I hope. Because I don't believe it does. All right, so it's still downloading. So I got a little bit of time here. We're going to have to wait for it. So other than that, though, I'm not going to worry about Prometheus because I'm not going to really need it right now. And we've done, we've done some stuff on Prometheus before, so I'll bring that in at a later time. And uh, in the next couple of videos, we'll work on setting up the NiFi cluster and getting their data connection set up so that we can connect to uh, all of our individual containers. So uh, Apache Cassandra, the set up our, well, we don't need to set up any connections really for Kafka because uh, that's a processor. But we do have our database pools connections that we need to set up for uh, Cassandra. And then MySQL, MS SQL, and then we can set up our services for uh, Redis as well. So we can have those going. All right, so there's a lot of different containers here, so it might take a little bit. Now we do some things to uh, pay attention to. We haven't had a problem yet, but if you did have a problem when deploying the stack, uh, you had a configuration or something like that wrong, you would see a, a notices pop up here in the corner and then it would not deploy. And the notices up here would be all red, <laughs> indicating that there's a problem. So you want to hover over those, those so you can read them, to take some, take a minute to go ahead and read them. And then you can see how that's going. Uh, honestly, we should be able to jump over here. Yeah, it's not done putting the stack up yet, which means that we don't see any containers yet. So we're still in just a waiting game here, waiting for those to come up. Uh, Zookeeper is running though, so we do know that's there. And... Yeah, it's taking a little bit longer than I thought it would take. Might be bad download. Let's see here. Not volumes, images. Oh, we can see the images. Okay, so it is pulling images, and we can see some of these are quite big here. So CP server 1.4, schema registry 1.4, KSQL DB 1.4 or 1.1, 1 .1, uh, enterprise control center one, and then server connect Digigen 1.8. So quite a few, we'll probably have a couple more that are already done as well. All right, so, oh, looks like it's done. So it brought us two here. So we can see uh, Fluent has stood up. All of them are running right now. So it looks like we're good there. So what I should be able to do is off screen, jump over, uh, refresh and see if the UI is up. We might be waiting for that still, so let's see. We can always check and see if it's having any problems. So that would be Control Center. Check out the log. Uh, it looks like it's still booting up. All right, so that should be done now. So we can come back out here. And then let me go ahead and bring us over to it so we can check it out. All right, so that will be a new window here and window capture. All right, so here we are. So this is the control center for Confluent Kafka for the enterprise. Uh, but it's part of what's one of the containers that gets stood up. So we can see here that we have a uh, cluster called control center dot cluster. Uh, it has one broker inside of it, a couple of partitions already, some topics that get stood up that are part of the uh, installation and all that good stuff and a part of this entire package. We can click on that and we can get inside of it. We can see our broker, a little graph here that's just starting now, showing us information on the broker for in and out bytes, so production and consumption. Uh, how many topics there are right now, how many partitions for those topics, and everything else that comes along with it. So if we wanted to, we could always go to topics, we could 
add a new topic here, populate it. Uh, broker, we can go ahead and get more details on that, how we're doing storage, memory usage, all that good stuff. The, we're not gonna use much more in here. There's the cluster setting information here. And then, yeah, that's really, we're not gonna get, we're not gonna utilize too much more in here. Really about the topics and broker information here that I'm interested in. That way we can see and we can share it there. So this is our installation for it. And cool thing is it's up and running. So let's go ahead and jump back over to Portainer. And here we are. So this is my sandbox and where I'm going to leave it for right now. Uh, I'm ready now to start working on Apache NiFi, getting things set up over there. And really what I like to do when I first get into NiFi is set up my database um, connections for all the databases that I have. And I like to set them up at the, uh, so let's go ahead and jump over to that. So what I like to do is inside of NiFi, uh, especially my production environments, I like to set up first things first is go in and obviously, uh, cause I'm using security. So I'll set up my policies and all that stuff. Uh, we don't have that option here because we're not, uh, we're not enabling security at any level right now. And, uh, one of the first things that I do though, is start configuring at the main flow level at the root level for NiFi and going to control services and adding my services as I need them. So first, I mean, I would have my MySQL one. So that would be a database pool or a connection pool and then start filling out my first one. So this would be my, my SQL. And then I would have another one start setting up my next one. Oops. Uh, all right. So my next one, and we'll set up that one as well. So I know it's been a pretty popular, it's always a question someone always has is, uh, how do you configure these exactly? So, and most of it comes down to the property settings here and the specific connection strings, the class name information. And really that's all there is. The URLs are normally the important part, getting that set up. So we'll go ahead and uh, cover each one of these and go through the configuration of each one. And so that we can, uh, so I can share that with you guys and you can utilize that. Uh, and then in here, the next one I guess we're gonna have would be, so Cassandra is a service, there it is. So that one's gonna utilize the Cassandra service provider. So I add that one in there. And the difference in that one is uh, you're providing contact points. So a comma separate list of the nodes. And then the cli uh, besides client authentication, the consistency level, we'll cover that when we talked about all the consistencies if you're unfamiliar with Cassandra and namespace information if you wanna populate that. Another one is I said before, Redis is a separate one as well. So it has its own Redis connection pool service. That one needs to be configured too. So how is your Redis set up, standalone, Sentinel or cluster? Uh, the connection string information, the index information, and any other settings that are applicable to what you're doing. Uh, the other ones that we have, let's see, MS SQL, MySQL, we had Redis stood up. Uh, what else did I have? I have, Red S, my C, oh, the Mongo, right? So, uh, Mongo. Mongo does have a controller service. So we could utilize that one too and get that one set up too. All right, so really that's all there is for this one. The environment, my entire sandbox is set up the way I want it to be. So I'm ready to go and start getting things configured in here so we can start building out the next, so I can start building out the next data flow that I'll be working on and sharing with everyone. So I'll catch you in the next video as we, in that video, we'll work on uh, configuring our first connections and start getting them set up one by one, verifying, and I like to always verify that NiFi can send data to and retrieve it from. So we'll set up a couple of test ones real quick as we verify each one of these. Talk to you later.